a small child. I lived in France. It's one of the reasons I really like Canada so much. My father, my grandmother was Canadian. She was French Canadian. And my, uh, my, all my father's relatives grew up just within about 10 miles of the Canadian border. When I got to Canada, I thought, oh, there's a whole country full of people just like my relatives. I love this. <laughs> I'm excited to have with me a very special guest, Charles Martin Smith, whose storied career as actor, writer, and director has been well chronicled worldwide. Charles has starred in iconic films such as American Graffiti, The Buddy Holly Story, and The Untouchables, to name a few. He's also made an impressive list of TV roles he's been in, such as Motive, The Beast, and he's directed and wrote movies such as Snow Walker, Stone of Destiny, and the list goes on. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have him here today to talk about his recent award with the Whistler Film Festival's A Career Achievement Award with his latest film this time, making its Canadian Festival premiere at this year's event. And welcome. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, so I know you probably get asked this, but I, what does this award mean to you? Well, it's just, it's, I guess it's a validation and it's very flattering, of course, but you know, that I've been doing this for a long time and I'm, uh, that to be remembered for, you know, a lifetime, a body of work is I think more flattering than being honored for one particular film or one other thing, you know, to, to th that I've been doing this all my life and I'm still here. It's pretty good. It's uh, and it, and uh, you know, I've lived in Vancouver for many, many years. So the mm -hmm. Whistler Film Festival to me is the the closest and the most precious to me. I've been there many times. I've had films there and so on, and uh, have watched other people get lifetime career achievement awards. <laughs> and for it to be my turn this time was just really gratifying. Yeah. So congratulations and. Who, if I may ask, who uh, congratulated you? Any anyone that you can share with us? Yeah, um, Angela Heck, who's the who's running the festival, was the one that actually presented me with the award. Awesome. It seems like everybody yeah. came up. I, I people from all over the Canadian film industry, it, which is, as I said, it's really flattering. It's nice to be remembered after having been doing this all these years. Yes, I mean it's like you know that day when you said I you know i won you know it's such a such an amazing and it's a testimonial for all the work and extremely oh. uh amazing work that you've done you know acting and writing directing and and i mean i understand that theater was your first choice it was correct? when i was a young acting student in, in in los angeles where i grew up i grew up in la because my father was in the film business he was an animator and so he was working at the studios and I was around. And I always wanted to be like my father, but unfortunately I can't draw. I, <laughs> I can hardly draw a stick figure. Why I did not inherit that talent of his, I don't know. But, uh, but I just got very interested in acting and I particularly loved the theater. And I thought that I would probably end up having a life either working in the theater or maybe teaching theater at the university level and uh, I, you know, I that was my main interest. But being around Los Angeles, where the film industry is so prevalent, um, I actually had an agent come and see me in a play that I was doing and asked to represent me. And I said, sure. And I went on a few interviews and I started getting work in film and television. And then I started studying it more strong. I probably studied acting for seven or eight years, even after I started working. I kept going to classes and trying to yes. get to learn more. Yeah, it's such a craft, like in yeah. you know, when you're acting and and there is a difference by understanding and being on stage and in and in TV and film, correct? Yeah, that is. It is. And it's it's tricky to adapt one to the other. I had not acted on stage for a long time, but then when I moved to Vancouver, this would have been in the early 80s, I helped to start the Vancouver Shakespeare Festival 
which still lives on in a different form called Bard on the Beach. And uh, it was Shakespeare, which I love. And I went out there and I thought, I realized how rusty I was at it because film acting is very different. As a film actor, you're doing your whole role in little bits and pieces. And then it's all going to be edited together later. But of course, in the theater, you go out there at eight o'clock and you're, it's just you, you and the audience for the next two and a half hours. Right. And every audience is different, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's really amazing. And I think it's a really, um, if I'm like a transferable skill, you know, from theater to film uh, to TV. But I wanted to, I understand that um, in the film Never Cry Wolf, which was, I believe, 1983. Now, was this when you fell in love with to stay in BC? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would, we actually started filming in 1980. I know the movie says 83 on it because that's when it was released and when it was finished. But we began filming in 1980 and it was the first time I'd ever been to BC. And I came through Vancouver and I remember I was staying at a hotel on the West End and I was looking out at English Bay and Stanley Park and all the buildings. And I thought, this is fantastic. I would love to live here. <laughs> and uh, it, did, it came to pass, of course, that I did exactly that. But um, British Columbia is just so spectacularly beautiful. And we filmed Never Cry Wolf in northern BC, all the way up into the Yukon, as far north as Dawson City. And we filmed on and off for almost two years. It was wow. an enormous amount of filming that just, it just sort of went on and on. The director, Carol Ballard, who is a genius, is um, primarily a documentary filmmaker. So it was almost like I was the subject of a documentary, me and the the two Inuit actors that we had and all the wolves. Yes. I mean, and what a what an experience. So that's, you know, it's it is cold, but it's also was there something else that you really, really liked about BC? There were two things. I mean, I really I was so impressed by nature and even in Vancouver you're in the middle of nature, you're aware of it. You've got the mountains and it, the ocean is right there and all the parks and forests. It's really an unusual and unique city to have all of that, plus all the great things of a really good city, great restaurants and theaters. And, and then the other thing was the people. I made such good friends there. Uh, and I was just impressed by the kindness and the warmth of the people. So I just, uh, and a couple of friends of mine, including Farley Mowat, who had written never the book Never Cry Wolf as long, uh, along with you know a hundred other wonderful books. He said, Charlie, you gotta come up here. Come on, you gotta come up. So anyway, uh, I had a few friends. It was the people really as much as the, the beauty. That's oh, that's wonderful. And thank you, Charles, for sharing. And I also want to congratulate you, if I haven't congratulated in the intro, about um this time now was this the first time in front of a camera for a while for acting for a long time i sort of began to be more of a director and writer um particularly proud of snow walker which was my next farley mowat story 20 years after never cry wolf and that was one that i wrote and directed i didn't act in it um and i got to go back up and live up in the north again this time over in um Nunavut with uh, uh, another wonderful Inuit uh, actor and, and, and Barry Pepper, who's from the island. So I, it was another real joy doing the Snow Walker. And then I went on and directed various other things, uh, including Dolphin Tail for Warner Brothers. And, and so things I hadn't acted in a long time. <laughs> but when, when COVID hit and the industry shut down during the pandemic, I decided just to take a break myself because, uh, and I found that I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I liked taking a break. I liked getting up in the morning and not thinking, oh, I've got four meetings today and I've got to do, I've got, I've got to finish this draft. I've got to finish. I said, whoa, this is really nice. Uh, I could, I could get used to uh, a kind of semi-retirement. So in a way that's kind of what I've done, but um, my friend Rob Vaughn, who um, has, I've known as a producer for 25 years, and he and I have had a number of projects together. Uh, 
he was working on something and he asked me to come along, help him produce it, help him develop the script and also to play one of the two leading roles. I thought, well, that's almost, that's easier than directing, you know, because I don't have to worry about absolutely everything that goes on. And I looked forward to acting again, but it was a challenge. I had not played a major role in a film for at least 15 or 20 years. But it's it's like a muscle memory too. Like once you start back, you know, it's it doesn't take long, if I may say. And um, but you also executive produced as well, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Well, I helped him develop the project. Yes. On as it came on as executive producer, and then we worked on the script and casting and everything. I was involved from a producer point of view. But on set, Rob was a very good director and very good with actors. And although I was a little insecure after not having acted in a long time. He was very strong in his guidance and taking me through it. Plus the actress who plays the lead, young actress from Toronto named Anwen O'Driscoll. She's brilliant. She's so good and so fun to work with that, you know, for an actor, it's like playing tennis. You need that good partner on the other side of the net to get the scenes really working. And Anwen and I had a great experience working together. Yeah, that made cool. it so much easier. Yeah, and for the viewers who may not know, can you tell us about the film? It's an interesting story. It's uh, uh, The writer is a, a young queer writer in Los Angeles, and she was trying to write something that would kind of speak to her struggles as a teenager growing up and struggling with her sexuality and where she fits in in the world. And the so the, in the story, Anwen plays the young teenager who uh, has she's be, she's found some letters and diaries from her estranged father who's just passed away. She hasn't seen him since the age of three, and she wants to set off on a journey across country to learn who her father was. Mm. And uh, I play a Vietnam veteran, broken down alcoholic hearse driver decent casting i i figure and i uh to she ends up kidnapping me sort of or blackmailing me into driving her across the country and we become allies in her journey and as rob often says this movie is about allyship about the fact that we can't get through life alone we're all in this together and what that character what her character both of our characters go through on this trip, I think is very moving. It's funny, it's charming, and it's very um, emotional. Yeah, so that's wonderful. And I would like to ask you about, I mean, I know American Graffiti, um, I understand it's been voted one of the 100 best movies all time by mm -hmm. the American Film Institute. And like, I understand that you almost missed casting, you almost missed the thing. <laughs> That's a story, yeah. yeah. Partly because of my love of theater. Yes. Uh, I was I it was in college. I was a junior. And I'd already worked for about a year. I'd done a couple of smaller roles in films and television. And I took a semester off of college to go to uh, England and backpack around, travel. I'd been with my family before, but this was my first trip to go out on my own. I was 18. And I really wanted to sit in Stratford-on-Avon, Shakespeare's birthplace, and soak it up and learn more about Shakespeare and sit in the library there and see some, some uh, plays by the Royal Shakespeare Company. So I, I went to Europe. And when I got back, my agent said, well, it's too bad you were gone. You missed the casting for this movie. And there's a lot of teenage parts, but, uh, you know, oh, well, too bad. He checked in, with, and, it, and it turned out the film... They'd been casting for almost two months, but wow. they hadn't completely finished. I think this was on a, like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So I went into the office and I met uh, Fred Roos and Mike Fenton and the casting people. And they gave me a quick audition and brought me back two days later. I did a screen test and I got the part. But if I'd, if I'd, stayed, in, uh, if I'd stayed in England for one more week, I would have completely missed the casting. So... It's pretty a crazy story. 
Yeah, I mean, what a what perfect timing. And, yeah, it was absolutely perfect timing. I missed it, almost missed it, almost yeah. missed it, but I managed to. It was to meant that. to be. Yeah, and it was a great, that was a great, fun movie to work on. Yes, I mean, and the thing too, like, um, like if, you know, which actors do you, I mean, do you hold in highest regard or who do you like to work with, I should say? Well, you know, I, I, I really do have uh, a fondness for really great theater actors. And I've had a chance to work with a number of them, uh, especially some of the British actors. I had a chance to work with Peter O'Toole once, and that was fantastic. Um, Sean Connery. And I had a chance to work with um, some great actors on The Untouchables, some, you know, American actors, Robert De Niro and so on. I got the chance to direct Morgan Freeman, who was a legendary actor. Uh, I got to direct him twice in the Dolphin Tale films and even write, write for him, which is an interesting thing, by the way. As a writer, you're sitting down, you're writing dialogue. If you know Morgan Freeman is going to be reading these lines, it makes it much easier to write. <laughs> you can hear that wonderful voice. So I've had a great experience with a lot of different actors that I'm uh, really grateful for. Well, that's, that's, that's just wonderful, Charles. I always say that. Um, but what is next for you? I don't know. I really am kind of dialing back. I'm in Palm Springs right now, having a wonderful uh, it's warm day and yes. uh, having just left the snows of Whistler. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm working on some, some scripts and I've got another project with Rob Vaughn that we're talking about. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of dialing back. I told my agent, you know, let me know if something interesting comes along. But otherwise, I'm perfectly happy just to be in a kind of a semi-retirement. And let the creative um, the juices, if you will, like, you know, it's good to take a break, right? Like, as you were mentioning, COVID, right? It was yeah, nice it to was good to take a break. But I really did enjoy not working because it's very stressful, especially when you're a writer-director. There's a lot of just stress and politics and trying to get a film made and trying to get it off the ground. And it's nice to not have to worry about that so much. Yeah, so no, Charles, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, not at all. This has just been great. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about Never Cry Wolf and Snow Walker and some of my, uh, some of my experiences. It's, it's very flattering. It's nice to be remembered. Well, you're so well deserving, Charles, and congratulations again. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> yeah. Because you were in France, right? When you, you were... I was a small child. I lived in France. Yes. Yeah, just a small child. I lived in France. I think it's one of the reasons I really like Canada so much. My father, my grandmother was Canadian. She was French Canadian. And my uh, my all my father's relatives grew up just within about ten miles of the Canadian border. When I got to Canada, I thought, "Oh, there's a whole country full of people just like my relatives." I love this, <laughs> and uh, and I love I love that it's bilingual and I can still practice my French. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank Good you. Time. Thanks.